It was a name that sounded so sweet, so seductive. Welcome back, everybody. Santa Fe Factory's YouTube channel. I'm Stephen Quam, executive producer of Santa Fe Factory. In this episode, I want to talk about all the buzz that's going around with Lady Gaga playing in the upcoming Gucci movie. And although I think that's kind of a cool thing, I think there's a lot more we can learn about succession, dealing with family members and the craziness that goes on with that. And not only in the fashion industry, but any other industry. So the three things I want to talk about in this episode is the Gucci saga is a good example of bad succession. Founder Gucci Gucci and his son Aldo worked hard to build a successful fashion empire. Only see the, the third generation of family run it into the ground. Gucci needs new blood. It's time to take out the trash. Lack of common vision, family feuds, and the power struggles led the company's demise and eventually sailed to a global investment manager, InvestCorp. If you have a family-owned business, there are many ways to minimize the risk of this happening to you. Have a succession plan. Only two-thirds of family businesses have a succession plan in place. Your business should be one of them. Identify your clear goals for the future and share them. Prepare others to take on the responsibilities of leading the company. The second thing we can learn from the Gucci saga is no one will stab you in the back like your family. Pick the real firecracker. She's a handful. Bravo. Gucci's son's Aldo ruled Gucci with an iron hand. He never shared important management decisions with anyone. When Aldo's son's Paulo attempted to do things his way, his father shot him right down. And eventually they couldn't do, be in the same room together. Paulo eventually tired of his father's autocratic style and to get back at him, he provided the IRS with enough information to get his father convicted of tax evasion. Take that, Dad. When Aldo's brother died, his son Mauricio teamed up with Paulo to run the company, but the relationship quickly soured. Paulo used his favorite tactic, tipped off the tax authorities, forcing Mauricio to flee to Switzerland. That's some family. I don't consider myself to be a particularly ethical person, but I am fair. Ultimately, Paulo launched his own fashion line with disastrous results and Mauricio obtained complete control of Gucci. Mauricio's, Mauricio ran the company into the ground and had to sell it, but that was the least of his worries. Mauricio was divorced his wife, Patrizia Regini, and she then hired a hitman to kill him. She was found guilty for her part of murder and sentenced to 29 years in prison until death does its part, indeed. And the third lesson to be learned is sometimes you could use a little help from your friends. When Investment Corp took over Gucci, the company had just lost $22 million had a negative net worth of 17.3 million and had a very bleak future. Domenico De Soli was appointed CEO. He engineered a remarkable turnaround. His most brilliant strategy was going outside of the company for talent. He hired Tom Ford to be the head of design. Ford's provocative and glamorous designs were a huge hit and his cutting edge sex appeal charge advertising campaigns caused a stir. That stir led Gucci's earning a record 83 million in De Soli's second year at the helm. Tom Ford's designs restored Gucci's prestige and exclusivity. So don't be afraid to look outside the company for talent. And once you have found your perfect match or matches, give them room to do their thing. Once we get beyond the drama of Gucci's saga and the publicity surrounding Lady Gaga's role in the film, there are important lessons to be learned from this company. I hope you found them interesting and useful.